yo yo what is up so in this tutorial we're gonna be uh finishing off our animation uh at like by finishing off our you know jump start and our jump end and uh specifically we're gonna be going over uh something called state aliases and um they're pretty powerful um and uh, yeah let's just uh hop into it all right, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do something I forgot to do in the last video. So we're gonna open our uh, third person character here. <clears throat> and we're gonna uh, just open that up. We'll go to the viewport here. Uh, I forgot to add the LOD sync in the last video. So we're just gonna do that. So we're gonna go into our MetaHumans folder and we're gonna open our MetaHuman. And uh, down here on the LOD sync, we're just gonna copy that guy and uh, paste it in. So that way our LODs will work, because uh, without that, it, it, it won't work. So we're just going to compile and save. Something else I want to do before we hop into the jumps is we're going to go to our third person blueprint animations. We're going to change the name of our animation blueprint because we're going to have more than one uh, animation blueprint and th that we'll all be using, uh, you know, MetaHuman. So we don't, we don't want that to just be called MetaHuman ABP. We're just going to call this player underscore ABP. And, uh, yeah. All right. So now we're going to, uh, we're going to hop into our animation blueprint. So we can close down this meta human and then we can compile this and save. We're going to go to our mesh on our player character go to the, uh, anim class, hit the magnifying glass. We're going to go into the, uh, the animation blueprint here. And uh, we'll go into the anim graph over here on the left side. And we're just going to pull this guy back. And we're just going to disconnect this. Um, actually, we'll leave that connected. We'll disconnect that. And we're going to pull off of here. Uh, we're going to rename this locomotion to unarmed locomotion. And we're going to pull off of this. And we're going to get a cache. So we're going to get a, a new save cache pose and what a cache pose does is it basically just saves all of this uh, into a cache that we can pull in. So say we pull in our unarmed. Um, uh, did I spell that wrong? Unarmed. Let's compile. Oh, we didn't save that. You, you got to change the, the name of the cache here. That's that's the problem. Unarmed uh, loco cache what we'll call that that was my bad so we can pull in our unarmed use cash pose unarmed loco cash and what this does is it just pulls this whole entire state machine into this cache so we can just easily you know add it to things um but we don't need that here so we're just going to compile uh not compile we're going to delete that we're going to add a new state machine called uh state machine we're going to call this unarmed um, main states. So kind of like uh, if you look in the uh, go to the characters, mannequins, animations, ABP Manny. Kind of like what they're doing in the anim graph here. They have the locomotion and then they have the main states. That's uh, basically what we're doing here. So we'll just hop over here and um yeah we'll plug this guy into our slot compile and save and we're gonna go into here and if you look over here on the main states uh they have the locomotion a state called locomotion and if you open that up it's just the cached pose in there so that's what we're gonna do here so we're just gonna add a state called loco motion and we will add our cached unarmed logo motion in there that's all we need to do in there and so something i recently learned about is uh, how they have this set up um for a while i just kind of ignored how they had this set up and kind of did uh kind of did the state machine you know the old school way by having all wires connected in and out uh, but recently I learned about what these things are these Right here the two falling and two land these are what's called a uh, a state alias 
which are pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna be using those because they are a solid way of keeping things organized. And just to kind of go over what they are, I have the uh, the Unreal Engine documents up, and just a quick little rundown of what it is. Uh, where is it at? The very top. State alias. As you build more complicated state machines with many states and ways to transition between them, you may want to use state aliases to improve your graph. State aliases are sh shortcut type nodes you can add to your state machine to reduce the line clutter, consolidate transitions, and improve the readability of your graph. So yeah, basically all they do is help you not have to have everything connected through a wire. Um, so... If you go down, we'll keep reading at the right here. So state aliases work by defining which states can transition into, then connecting the alias to other states using the normal transition method. Click the state alias node, and in the details panel, you can observe the following. Each state within the state machine is listed as a property, as you can see here. Any state that you have, it will be, um, we will just add one real quick, add state alias. And we'll call this, um, what do they call it over here? Uh, two falling. We'll just do that one first. We'll call this two fall falling. And as you can see, when you add a state alias, it shows our locomotion state here. And as we add the other states, which is going to be our jump, fall, loop, and land, uh, which you can see here, you click on those and you, it, it adds all of those to this. And basically what it does is if you check these it basically it, it just says that you can transition from this locomotion to another state so it just keeps things organized and and you know it helps you not have to have everything connected through a wire so definitely a uh, powerful and uh kind of interesting because i still see a lot of a lot of uh tutorials today that are um not taking advantage of this they're still doing it the old school way which you know i i have been as well for a while till i recently learned about what in the world these things are and uh we're definitely gonna be taking advantage of these because these are useful so yeah we're gonna go from our two falling to our jump so we'll just go from here add a state to jump so we will go in there and we're gonna add our jump like that and we need to add a uh, transition which is gonna be uh, this weird they get the uh, the velocity and is falling so we're just gonna copy this over and we're gonna add this to our transition here and compile and save so now we can go into our jump from our locomotion because we have it checked over here and we're going to pull off of here we're going to add another state uh, which is going to be our fall loop and we'll just hop in there we'll add our fall loop plug it in uh, make sure Make sure that is, uh, you click on the animation, make sure you have loop animation set to true. We'll compile that. And the transition here, what do they have? Uh, is falling, so yeah. We'll just do is falling here. So we'll pull in our is falling right here. And then we need a uh, way to go from our jump to our fall loop. And something else that's kind of cool is... Right now, if you compile and save, you get a warning um, about jump to fall loop would never be taken because uh, please connect something so it can enter transition. So something else I recently learned about is over here on the right side, they have this automatic rule based on sequence in state. If you click that to true, we don't have to, we now don't have to add you know a transition rule in there because it's going based on the automatic rule of the sequence so from the jump so basically once it's basically you know when this is done it will go into the fall loop 
So another useful thing I learned learned about recently. But they all they also have you know these other uh, blend settings down here, uh, which I was looking at how they're doing it over here on this one. They have the duration uh, set to 0.3 and cubic. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna set this to uh, 0.3 and we're gonna set this to cubic right here now as you can see there's a bunch of these uh it's basically just gonna you know kind of like a um you know a blend ratio if that makes sense so there's linear you know uh sinusoidal i think is how you say that quadratic you know they have all these different rules that you can use we're gonna use the cubic one like they do we're gonna compile and save and now that pretty much you know sets that to be done right there but now we need to add another state alias down here so that's what we're gonna do state alias oh yeah also on our two falling we need to add well actually we need to add our next state before we can do that so on the state alias would they call it over here to land so we're gonna call this to land <clears throat> And they have these set from, I think it's from jump and fall loop. So we can land from our jump and fall loop, right? Yeah, jump and fall loop over here. So we can go from this and we're going to add a state uh, called uh, land. And we'll open this up and we'll get our land animation. And we'll just compile and save. And now we need to add a uh, transition here, which I think is uh, we just need to get if we're not falling. So we'll pull in our is falling variable. And we're going to get a not boolean. And compile and save. Let me just make sure I did that right. Yeah, we did. Okay, cool. So now we need to add our two land to our locomotion. And we need to also add the... Uh, we need to just need to check our land on our two falling alias over here. So we're just going to check our land on that two falling right there. And then we're going to add a transition back to locomotion. And then we're going to pull the pull in our should move variable right there. Then we're going to also add a uh, another transition back and that'll just give us another one of these and basically what they did over here is the same thing that we did from our um jump to fall so whereas you know you may have seen in a ton of you know animation tutorials um normally you would add a transition that would you know a lot of people use something called time remaining remaining and then you would grab the, the previous animation and then, you know, see if it's less than, like, 0.1. So instead of doing that, uh, you can just add these states. Use automatic rule based on sequence. And that's basically already doing the, uh, you know, the time remaining kind of thing that a lot of people do. So for this one i think what they had it set to was 0.4 and they also had it set to cubic but we'll just make sure so we'll check that over here uh yeah 0.4 and cubic and uh we'll compile and save and now when you hop in the uh the jump works oh whoops hold on hold on i forgot about one thing on the two land or on the land they have a um in here they have something called an additive so we're just going to copy that additive we're going to pull this back Control v uh on the additive it's going to be our land and we'll hook this into the out uh output there and then on the base it's going to be our um um unarmed cache unarmed logo motion so that's why that weird thing happened um so now when you hop in it won't do that weird jump jump uh that little where it shrunk for a minute there and now our jump works we can transition in and out if we fall off a ledge over here it will do the fall loop and um yeah that's kind of it's kind of all i wanted to go over in this one 
Um, pretty pretty quick and easy one to go over. Um, something else. Uh, I just want to add a note. If you look right now, we have these weird weird lines that are being left by our um our feet. Uh, don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna get that fixed. Um, uh, probably in the next video. Uh, that is happening because if you look in our player character, um, in our uh mesh, we're using the preview. It's it's mostly because we're using this M underscore medium narrow body preview, which gives us these feet. But once we uh once we take our uh, our model into Blender and then we chop it into pieces. We won't be using this preview anymore, which will get rid of that. So, yeah, don't worry about that for now. But, um, yeah. Uh, actually, something else we can do real quick. You can see we're kind of floating. Let's just fix that real quick. So we'll hop into our character, go into the mesh, and then on the loco mo uh, not, not loco motion, location here. Uh, we're set to negative 80, uh, 89. We're going to set this to like negative 92. And that'll that'll just keep us from floating around. So yeah, now we're not floating, as you can see. But um, yeah. For now, we're gonna call it here. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you're new around here, uh, definitely subscribe. If you have any questions, definitely let me know those down in the comments. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.